Hey guys. Well, the weather app on my phone said that Pacifica was sunny and 73 degrees, but it's um, totally foggy over here, which is not really a problem, and it's still really nice. Uh, kind of cool, 59, 60 degrees, something like that. Um, and, but who knows, maybe the sun will come out. In the meantime, I'm gonna set up, and uh, maybe we'll talk about composition. The longer I've painted, the more I've realized that composition is like the most important thing. So uh, anyway, so I'm gonna set up my stuff and then we could talk about that. All right, so one of the differences between drawing and painting is that I think drawing is based on line and painting is sort of based on shape. So uh, the way I compose a painting is that I break it down, I break down the scene into simple shapes and then try to arrange those shapes in a, a pleasing way on the canvas or the panel. So um, let's take a look at the scene and I'll kind of explain what I mean. Okay, so um, when composing outdoors, I use a viewfinder, and I just made this one myself out of cardboard, um, and this one's for 11 by 14s and 8 by 10s. And so I just hold it up and try to find myself a good composition. Now this is a composition I've done before, which I kind of like. High, uh, uh, there's like a high horizon line, and then. Um, you've got the extended foreground with the beach area, uh, you know, featuring this beach area down below here. Um, and that kind of leads the eye into the painting, as opposed to if you were to have it like high like this. Uh, that's kind of got a horizon, the horizon is almost at the halfway point. That's just awkward. Um, also, if you were to just have maybe too much, you know, having the headlands there that uh, be too large in the foreground sort of blocks the, uh, kind of blocks the viewer from entering into the painting. So it's just more or less just experimenting until you have something that feels right to you. I usually like to build my compositions around light and shadow, uh, but obviously on a foggy day I'm not able to do that. So I'm just gonna do it maybe with light and dark. So in other words, the land mass is sort of dark. Um, there's a variety of colors in the water. I can maybe exaggerate those. So I'm just gonna start experimenting and seeing what I come up with. So this would be the horizon here. I'm gonna have the, the rock. I don't want this cliff to be, uh, you know, like I don't want the bottom of it to be at the halfway point. I'm trying to avoid putting any kind of, um, you know, dividing up the, the, the panel into quarters. So, and then there's rocks that go off into the distance out here, like that. And then the waves kind of come down this way. Uh, waves generally will come in a pattern like the radial sort of fashion like that, which kind of helps your composition as well. Um, so, and then the land curves around, and then there's some more land here in the foreground. Now this is a composition I've done before, so I know it works. Um, and I've experimented before and had problems. Like for example, uh, like I said, when this land mass here, this big land mass here, when this was, you know, when the bottom of this is like right in the middle, actually it is pretty close to the center of the panel. So that could be a problem, I might move it up a little bit. Okay, now out in the water, I'd like to kind of break up the, uh, I'd kind of like to break up the water in a way so that it's interesting. Um, there's some white water around the, the rocks and we can just make some random shapes of white water, kind of like around the edges. Okay.
And now that I've got my shapes on here, I can sort of be a little bit more specific about them. So. Okay, so you usually want to stand back about 10 or 15 feet, take a look at what you've got and see that it works out. One thing I noticed was that um, it would be more interesting if there was some land up in the distance here uh, because this, this rectangular space of sky is not particularly interesting. I could add layers of atmosphere here, but um, I know that there's land out there. Uh, it's just that it's hard to see because of the fog, So, but I'm gonna add that. All right, and I'm gonna use a big brush, number 10. Uh, Princeton, oh no, not Princeton, this is uh, the Utrecht Tuscan series, number 10, flat. And I'll probably use this brush for the whole painting. And I'm using Liquin as my medium. Kind of helps the paint spread nicely. All right, so I'm starting with my darks first, and this is um, burnt umber and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Just kind of trying to establish some of the darks here and then I'll work my way and then I'll work my way towards the lights. This is a mixture of uh, yellow ochre, a little bit of um, burnt sienna, kind of a random sort of muddy color. I'm not really trying to be super accurate at this point. Uh, just kind of get everything on the, you know, cover the canvas, and cover the panel, and then uh, get more specific after that. Okay, so the wet sand is sort of a purplish color, and I'm going to kind of come in dark, and then I will. There's there's a variety of colors in there. Um, but I'm just going to go with this sort of darkish purple color to start with. Okay, so for the water, I usually start with ultramarine, a little bit of cerulean, and then a touch of burnt sienna. Gives it this sort of gray-green color. And then I can adjust, you know, make it, you know, make it warmer or cooler, more blue, more yellow, more green, whatever. But this is a good starting point. Try not to be too careful, just kind of, you can see I'm not really, you know, controlling, overly controlling things because I want there to be ran, you know, like sort of a random nature to this. All right, I notice the water as it goes out towards the distance gets lighter and there's like patches of, of purple out there. All right, so I'm putting in the white water and I'm using like a very light violet 
mixed in with the uh, white. And I don't want to go super bright with the white yet because I want to have some headroom there so that I can add little pops of light at the end. So this white is sort of grayed down with, like I said, a little bit of uh, violet or purple. Again, holding the brush not in a way that I have where I have a lot of control. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. I'm um, just kind of trying to do like quick composition and not overwork things as usual. Uh, let's take a look at it and I can tell you what I think. Okay, so my focus today is just to like, you know, have uh, an interesting arrangement of shapes here. And I think, you know, so far it looks pretty good. Um, normally, like I said, I don't like to have, you know, say the bottom of this cliff here, you know, bisecting the canvas but I think there's enough of a sort of flow you know it kind of leads in this way and then these rocks kind of lead you out and then there's some interest in the in the uh, distance so in some ways it's kind of an S sort of composition okay so normally this would be the point where I would start uh, adjusting the colors and values and kind of fine-tuning things without messing up the overall design uh, it can be difficult when you're outdoors to tell if your composition is working or not. One trick is to walk back like 10 or 15 feet from the painting. Uh, or you could also like use a mirror. Some people will do that. They'll hold up a mirror and look at the painting in the mirror. Uh, or take a picture with your phone and crop it. The idea is to shrink down the image in your line of sight in some kind of way. Uh, it gives you a, you know, a view of the overall painting as opposed to like just focusing on one specific part of it, um, which is really easy to do, especially when you start getting into detail and everything. Uh, the more I paint, the less I'm interested in detail. It seems like if you get the composition correct and, uh, you know, you can just sort of suggest things and the viewer will fill in the gaps. Um, so detail isn't really necessary to get big stuff right, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, um, and ways to improve on composition are just to, you know, I'd say look at a lot of paintings and also paint a lot of paintings and then really evaluate your work. Uh, it just takes a lot of time. It's just time and experience. Um, and then everybody's got their own compositional taste. So uh, that's, you know, looking at paintings that you like and sort of figuring out what they did compositionally, I think is really useful. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll be doing more of these sort of, you know, semi-tutorial things occasionally. Um, so yeah, like I say, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Oh yeah, tomorrow's my reception, Sunday, October 14th. Uh, at the studio gallery and uh, put all the details down below 4 to 6 p.m. 1641 Pacific in San Francisco Maybe I'll see you guys there. Anyway till next time peace